My name is Josh Altergott, uh, and welcome to how to build and maintain effective design tables. This is a presentation that we have given at SOLIDWORKS World for several years now, and uh, it's a good uh, topic that covers all of the uh, basics from uh, the beginning of design tables and configurations all the way on up through some of the more advanced options that we have out there. Um, this presentation, by the way, we are recording, so if you do uh, have to jump out for any reason, you can come back later on, and we will have that recording uh, logged in there for you. Um, also, if you do have any questions, feel free to hit the chat window, and uh, we may not answer those right away for you. We may wait until a break or towards the end of the session and, uh, and answer them at that time. So thank you guys again for joining us, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So, so basically, just to start everything off, just kind of give you a little rundown on how we run a session here. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you information on a slide, then uh, switch and show you an example inside of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the examples that we're going to show you, these are simplified examples, not really real world. Um, they're meant to focus on specific topics that we are covering and, uh, and go into those details. Um, we're going to questions as you have them. That's one that we usually have when we're doing this uh, live in front of an audience. Um, you know, like I say, if you do have questions, drop them into the chat. We'll get back to you guys as quickly as we can with those. Um, like I say, we're going to defer to a later point. And um, surveys, this isn't SOLIDWORKS world, so there are no surveys for this one necessarily. Um, I think if WebEx sends you one, uh, feel free to send that out. I uh, always like to hear your guys' feedback on how we're doing. And here's the, the basic agenda. And there's a lot of stuff in here, um, but we'll get through it. Um, what we like to do, look at basically what's new to configurations and design tables in SOLIDWORKS 2018. What has SOLIDWORKS changed for us that makes, uh, makes the tool better? Um, then we look at design tables and parts. We start off with configurations, really just keeping it basic, kind of getting everybody refreshed as to what configurations are all about. Um, talk about design tables, the basics of that. Um, then we like to look at planning for the design table and, uh, and what it takes to, uh, to build an effective model for that. We then look at execution tips, uh, you know, starting simple, trial and error, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we bring it all together with uh, what we call the pipe example. Um, it, it gets into some of the different things that we can do inside of Excel, which is what drives our design table. Um, then we talk about taking it to the next level. SOLIDWORKS has a great tool called Configuration Publisher, and uh, we'll show you how that works. Cover a little bit about design tables and assemblies. Um, how it's similar to part table or part design tables, how it's different from part design tables. And then last uh, but not least, we'll take a little bit of a, uh, a look at design tables and drawings. Obviously, there's no SOLIDWORKS World Survey at this point in time, so you guys can go ahead and skip that section there at the very end. So um, what we have that is new to configurations and design tables. Uh, for parts and assemblies, um, there's been some additions to SpeedPack um, as far as rebuilding, a uh, setting up a rebuild mark on the SpeedPack configuration. Also, some bounding box options uh, in the reference geometry uh, are available on the configuration-specific tab. So, e-drawings as well. Uh, configurations now appear in the bottom. Uh, of the window to indicate the active uh, configuration. This works for SOLIDWORKS files only if you're opening up any other file types inside of eDrawings. This doesn't work, but you can see in our little example there, uh, right in the middle of the, uh, the eDrawings box there, it, it has the name and configuration listed out there for us. So, real convenient item there. Uh, for those of you using MBD, uh, there's configuration-specific properties inside of 3D PDF now. And this presentation, by the way, uh, there will be a link to a website at the end of this. If you guys want to write that down, you can actually go in and download um, a copy of the PowerPoint uh, saved off as a PDF uh, version for, for your reference later on. So, 
the first thing that we want to look at here is when to use configurations and design tables. Um, so we look at that as when we have a family of dissimilar parts or assemblies. We take a look at this, and uh, this my boss actually created. So uh, if you ever talk to Adrian, give him a hard time about this. Um, these are a series of parts that he created. This is what we want to try and avoid. Um, if we have similar files, uh, parts, assemblies, whatever they might be, we want to try and con condense them down and all be stored inside of a single file rather than having this uh, mess of files out in, uh, in our computer somewhere. So the basics of configurations. Different versions of a part within a single model file is the definition of it. So these are what we're looking at for our configurations. Uh, configuration Manager, uh, you got the ability to activate, add, or edit configurations that are out there. And you can see uh, the example there that just shows our couple different versions. The most common items that we are going to configure are going to be dimensions, uh, feature suppression, custom properties. Those are some of the main items here. So when we look at SolidWorks, by the way, um, I'm just going to tab over to it real quick. So here's our part file here that we have same one that I showed you in the example there. It has some basic configurations, whether it's uh, three or six inches with or without a hole. Double-clicking on any of these configurations takes you to that configuration. Uh, if I go to one, for example, that doesn't have a feature out there, we can see the feature tree here has the hole is suppressed uh, versus unsuppressed like in the other configurations. So very basic setup here for going through and working with those. So. The format of design tables, so configuration is pretty basic, uh, switch back and forth between those. If we really want to start to automate this and have a little bit better control over what we're working with, <clears throat> we can put that into a design table. And with a design table, our Excel spreadsheet, it controls our configurations for us. So we can see here we take those same uh, set of parameters that we had that I showed you just a minute ago, and we put those into our design table now. And this lists out all of our configurations in that column A. Um, it lists out in all of our, um, in row two, all the different properties and features that we're going to control. And that's the basic setup for us. Our formatting, like I said, Get a little bit ahead of myself here. Configuration names down the left column, uh, parameters control across the top. You have to be careful with the syntax. We'll talk a little bit about that as we get into it today. And the end result here, what you can see that's a little bit different is our configurations, when they list out inside of SOLIDWORKS, they now have a design table listed there. There's a little Excel symbol in front of each configuration name showing that it's being controlled with our design table. So if we take back a uh, quick jump here into SOLIDWORKS and we open up one here, this is the same part file except with a design table in it. You can see the Excel symbol is listed out there with each of these. Same features are being controlled. Same functions are happening. It's just all being done inside of our design table there. All right. <clears throat> so the basics for creating or inserting a design table. Um, we can create means uh, basically go to the insert drop-down menu, tables, design table is where you're going to find that. What you're going to see at the very top of the design table box, you're going to get a couple of options here. You're going to get the ability to go with a blank design table, just means it's a completely empty um, Excel uh, spreadsheet there. Um, you can go from file. This can be linked or unlinked. You do have to be careful if you're going from a file because dimension names, feature names um, are all very specific, and we want to make sure that all that syntax carries through from one file to another. You also have the option for auto-create. I think this is the way that is uh, used by far the most and is really the easiest way to, to go about creating configurations. It works out very well when multiple configurations like we have here already exist. And it takes, in turns, that list of configurations, like I said, brings it into that design table, like the example that we had showed you earlier. 
Uh, if only one configuration exists with the auto create, you do get options as well, which this makes it very uh, useful, especially if you're not familiar with design tables, don't feel comfortable with going with that blank format. Um, SolidWorks will ask, ask, ask you which uh, parameters you would like to control with your design table. And you can see we can grab those there, and those will automatically insert them into the proper location uh, inside of our design table. So, all right. The basics for our design table kind of keeping moving forward here. Editing. We have two options when we go to edit the design table. We'll jump back into SolidWorks here in just a minute and show you some of these. Um, edit table and edit table a new window. If you do edit table, it brings up the uh, design table inside of your SolidWorks window and uh, or inside your SolidWorks graphics area. Your SolidWorks ribbons are then replaced with Excel ribbons. So all the function functionality that you find in Microsoft Excel is then inside of SolidWorks for you. If you do edit table in the window, this will open up Excel in its own separate window. This works out really well when you do have um, multiple monitors. That way you can put your design table on one monitor, your SolidWorks on another monitor. It makes it real clean and easy to work with here. All right, and um, we'll hit the, uh, let's, before we hit the editing side of things here, let's quickly jump over to SOLIDWORKS here. I'm going to go ahead and close out my one, and this is our one that doesn't have a design table. So if we wanted to add in a design table, like I said, this is real basic here. Insert, tables down at the bottom of the list, design table is our list there. We get our options for blank auto creator from file. We'll go ahead and do auto create because we do have configurations already out there. SolidWorks is going to do its thing. It's going to look at all the different parameters, uh, whether it be uh, set up in a configuration, custom property, whatever that might be, and it's going to list those items out there for us. In this case here, we get description, we get our length, we also get the state of our holes. Now, that design table comes up inside of SOLIDWORKS. We do have complete control of that. We can change its size. We can change its location, uh, just like you would with any type of uh, file. Uh, you can grab it, move it around, do whatever you need to do with it. Once I click out into the graphics area, and this is probably the most common question that we get when we look at these, is that it exits out of the design table. and commits that in and saves it for us. We can see then our table is listed out here. We get our different um, symbols showing that it's being controlled with the design table. And if we want to edit that and go back, like I said before, just a right click on our design table here, we get edit table or edit table in new window. Those are the two options that we talked about. If we go edit table, once again, it brings back that. It's looking for any parameters that may have changed. And if there's none, it drops you right back into that design table. So, all right. So um, design table basics for editing. To add a feature or dimension to a design table, we get uh, a couple different ways of doing this. If we want to um, add in a feature such as the hole, um, make sure the appropriate cell is selected inside of SOLIDWORKS. So in this case here, selecting uh, cell C2, and then double click on a dimension to add it to a table, or click on um, a feature to add it to the table, and it'll list that item out in there for you. Um, you can create new configs by adding rows to the table if you want. And let's just show you some of that real quick. So if we go ahead and we won't save any of the things we're working on here. We've got another part here. So this is our same part. Um, it has no configurations out there. If we create this as a uh, blank table, for example, and we'll tell it to auto-create. SolidWorks is going to go out there. It's going to ask me what parameters I want to control. So I can tell it that I'm worried about the, the pipe diameter. I can select 
um, the length of the pipe. I'm not going to select the whole uh, feature yet. Well, actually, we'll go ahead and grab the whole diameter. We might as well grab that. We say OK. It puts those items out there for me. Now, if I want to control an item, like I say, for example, the hole, whether it is suppressed or not, you'll see I'm right here in uh, cell E2. Simple double click, and it puts the state of that feature for me. Now, it puts in unsuppressed, and we'll talk about some of the syntax later on. Um, we can do a U or an S um, just to simplify it. That way we can keep our rows nice and tight. We can create additional configurations. Uh, we can change different parameters if we want to. And we're not going to vary this too much here, but uh, we can keep things the same. You can copy and paste. You can do uh, all the same things that you would do inside of Excel. Um, and we'll talk about how to automate some of those features as we move forward as well. Once I click outside of here, Cellworks is going to tell me that generated a configuration for me. And we can go back over here and test that out and see how that configuration is operating. And we can see it's, uh, it's met my parameters. I double click on my feature here. We can see we're at 1.25 for our diameter, 5 for our length, and our hole is suppressed. So, all right. So design table options. These are available when the table is created, or later on you can go back with edit feature. And we have editing control. Basically, allow model up. Uh, edits to update the design table or blocking those. This is basically controlling whether or not your design table is operating bidirectionally, making changes one way or the other. Like we say, allow, uh, we talked about what those allow us to do. Block is going to block the design table parameters. You'll also get a warning notice as shown when a model edit is attempted. So, and that's that warn when updating design table. And here's the parameters uh, that are set for that. Here's also our other options here for adding new rows or columns and what's going to uh, pop up there for us. And that's the warning box that we talked about seeing. All right. So some of our other options that we have out here, um, new parameters in a model, if it, if a, if that has a design table, if we suppress a feature in one config but not another, um, or if we change a dimension in one configuration but not another, or we assign or change a custom property, the next time the table is edited, we're going to see a list including those features or dimensions. Um, we can select to any to add them to the table, and that's that new one, that, we're, that box that we're seeing in the upper right-hand corner there. New configurations, um, in a model that has a design table, if we add a configuration, the next time the table is edited, we're going to see a list including that new configuration. And once again, you see that in the upper right-hand corner there, it says new config. We can select to add that new configuration to the design table if desired. So, <clears throat> so as we talk about planning for our design table parameters, you have to think about what can a uh, design table control, first and foremost? So if we're looking at parts only, we have configuration name, uh, our materials. We have a list of items for assemblies only, whether components fixed or resolved. Um, and the last thing that we have here is a list of parameters that are available for both parts and assemblies. And you can see this is all the syntax. This is um, the legal values for what can be put, put in. Um, as far as text goes, you can see here, like we talked about before with syntax, uh, suppress or S, unsuppressed or U, just to keep that nice and tight and not having to have that whole word in there. And displays exactly what, uh, what happens out there for you. So this whole list of design table parameters um, is found in SolidWorks Help. If you just type in the search in SOLIDWORKS Help, if you type in design table parameters, um, I believe it's the second or third item there, and it says summary of design table parameters. If you're planning on doing a lot of design tables, do what I do. You take a screenshot of that, print that out, hang it on the bulletin board in front of your computer. All right. So when possible, you want to build your model with configurations in mind. 
<clears throat> design intent is something that we always preach when we are talking about building parts inside SOLIDWORKS. This definitely plays a part inside of our design tables as well. Uh, we want to make sure that we dimension appropriately. Uh, avoid creating children, feature, children to features that will be suppressed. So make sure as you're adding dimensions, you're not accidentally selecting the edge of a hole that may become suppressed later on when you're putting in that dimension. Make sure you're grabbing the appropriate items for that. <clears throat> you also have to think about how complex is the project that you're going to be working on. Um, how many features and dimensions are going to be involved? How many configurations do we need to create? Um, is the model complete? Have we gotten to the point that we say, you know what, this thing's 90-95% of the way done, or are we only 50% of the way done? That can play a big factor into uh, whether or not you're taken care of. Um, is there any swoopy geometry uh, with underdefined curves or splines? If there is, you got to be aware if you're changing lengths, diameters, things like that, um, and you got curves and splines in there that don't have dimensions assigned to their points, you could end up with a real hot mess on your hands as you start to switch configurations. Also, are there any external references to other parts or assemblies? That's obviously going to play a factor. And then last, um, will equations be useful? Um, and if we're talking about equations, are we going to end up with SOLIDWORKS equations or Excel functionality? Uh, those are both options, uh, and we can work one way or the other, I would suggest. Um, you can do a mixed environment of both SOLIDWORKS equations and Excel functions, but obviously that's going to get pretty messy. Try and keep all of those in one location. All right. <clears throat> So the next thing that we have as far as the planning side of things go, and I think you guys have probably seen some of this if you're paying attention to some of my models, um, what features are going to be involved and how are those features going to be named. We want to name them appropriately. We got boss extrude one and cut extrude one, sketch one and sketch two. We want to tra train jokes to be appropriate. Rod, hole, rod, sketch, hole, sketch. Now we know exactly what the meaning behind those is. Also, what dimensions are going to change. By default, our dimensions come in D1 at sketch 1, D2, D3, on and on. Um, what we want to control with that, what we want to do, we want to name them appropriately. Pipe diameter, length, all of those items come in, to, come in there for us. So, how do we display those dimensions then so that we can make those changes, work on those items? Um, when editing a design table, we want to see dimensions, um, so we can double click on them. Uh, we can double click on a feature to display its dimensions. Be careful. This can also add the feature to the design table, and you may or may not want that. So we can also right click on the annotations folder, select show feature dimensions uh, to display every dimension that's in the part. Uh, it might show too many dimensions, so we can always right-click on any feature and select the ability to hide its dimensions. So let's take a look. We're going to close out of this simple one here, and we'll open up the one that had the design table in it already again. And dimension names, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, you can hit the drop-down here. Uh, where it says D1 for our display. That will display our dimension names for us. Um, like I said, we can double click on any feature that will display that dimension for us. Um, and you can see, because this is being controlled with the design table, by the way, uh, the magenta color indicates that those are being controlled with the design table. We can see each of these dimensions is uh, controlled uh, or has the name changed on it. Double click on that dimension. You can change it in the modify box here. You can change it in the primary value box um, over here as well. Those are both uh, perfectly fine places to be able to change those items. How we can also display those dimensions, like I said, a right click and uh, show feature dimensions. And we got all those dimensions displayed. Looks like WebEx is being a little uh, particular today and not uh, hiding some of those dimensions out there for me. Uh, we'll click on that guy, see if he stays up on the screen or not. 
some reason he doesn't want to play nice for us today. Um, but what we can do, we can right-click on any of these features. We can select Hide All Dimensions. It will hide the dimensions for that particular feature. Uh, we can right-click Show All Dimensions, and it will show those dimensions for us. So there we go. Now they're back up on the screen there with a quick little rebuild. So, all right. So that's how we can quickly hide or show those dimensions. Um, that right click for hide all dimensions or show dimensions, um, that does work feature by feature. You can't select multiple features to hide or show them. So, all right. So some of our execution tips as far as our design table is concerned. Start simple. Trial and error. Start with some of your major features, test it out, and make sure it works. Um, add user notes. It's a great way of letting other people know what your intent is with that design table. These files, uh, much like you know blueprints that are hanging around the office, these could be around for a very long time. You're probably not going to be the only person to work on these files. So adding notes in there, um, just a dollar sign user notes. Um, these configs have holes, these configs do not have holes. It's an easy way to put um, a differentiator in there so you can keep an eye on what's going on. Don't add too much. I have been on site with customers and they have, you know, they go show me their design table and it's from column A all the way out to column triple Z because they put every feature, every dimension, everything that you could possibly think of inside the design table. Only put in the parameters that you're going to control. I would always say save a copy of the design table uh, as that way if there are any issues, if you maybe type some syntax in wrong or anything like that, you do have a copy of that design table for later on. Um, don't skip uh, any rows or columns. Skipping a row or column, if SolidWorks sees a blank, that's where it stops working at that time. So leaving that gap in between those, that is going to create a a uh, big problem for us. So we want to bring this all together. We'll talk about our pipe example here. So this is kind of the uh, the worst case scenario I guess you'd go with. And if you guys have seen my presentation before, I've used this um, over and over again, but it's a great way to illustrate exactly how things can go wrong with uh, configurations. So what the customer said to us is, there was 106 different sizes and schedules. Easy thing that we can control with our design table. Then they tell you you want four different materials for each size, schedule. All right, not too bad. That's 424 different size, schedule, material configurations. We can make that happen. Then they tell you they want each size, schedule, and material in eighth inch increments from one inch up to 20 feet. Well, we do the math on that, that's 1,912 length configurations. You multiply that out by your 424 previous configurations, you have now crossed over into 800,000 different configurations that are possible with just this one chart. So know what you're getting yourself into. Make sure that it makes sense for you and that you're not biting off more than you can chew um, or more than your computer can chew, I guess, at that point. Um, because this file is going to be reused time and time again, we want to be real careful with it. So, all right. So when we talk about that pipe example, we have a lot of parameters that the customer gave us. They want eighth inch increments, they want specific materials, they wanted a whole bunch of different items. So what we can use, we can utilize that, the power of Excel. And when we look at that, what can we do with Excel? We can use formulas, we can use drop down boxes, we can use conditional formatting, and we can use concatenations. All of these items allow us to really automate this process of building our design table. So what does all this mean for us? Let's jump over here into SolidWorks. Let's take a look at this pipe example real quick. So I have just a, uh, a very uh, simple version of it. And uh, we'll take this guy here. 
So here's all our examples. Um, here are our different lengths, our different sizes, our different schedules, all of that is out there. Um, and we'll go ahead, I'm just going to open up this Excel chart. Now, this is a copy of a design table that I saved off, and we talk about all those different options that we have out there. Solid, or Excel has a great way of being able to control this. We tell it that, hey, this cell is always equal to this top cell up here, so that way if I change my nominal diameter, all my nominal diameters change. Now, it happens pretty quick. There's a few other things that start to happen out here. Our pipe OD, our length, our length is controlled by the cell above it plus an eighth of an inch. Um, descriptions, materials, our schedule. We got user notes out here with our schedule sizes. Boom, we can turn that into a drop-down box. We can easily change from Schedule 40 to Schedule 80. All of them update. Now, some of the other things that you'll see out here is our configuration name. I changed my schedule out here from 40 to 60, or from, 60, or from 80 down to 60. All my schedules update at that time. If I want to create new configurations, because this is Excel, all I have to do is highlight that one cell or that one group of cells, drag this down, all of my new configuration sizes will be automatically generated. So you can go very basic with it, or if you have a lot of possible configurations that you want to create, you can automate it and put that uh, automation in there. In the case here where the customer wanted 800,000 configurations, we created one model file, we created one chart, we were able to insert that into different uh, names or different sizes of this and create all the configurations they want in quite a few different part files versus 800,000 configs in one. All right. So that's our simple little, uh, little pipe example there and, uh, and what we have. So, all right. So next thing is we start to move forward here. So taking it to the next level. That's a lot of configurations to control. It's a lot of things to manage there. So what we can start to look at is something that Solveworks has in it called the Configuration Publisher. And the basics of this. What we do is it creates a property manager to allow easy configuration selection when inserting the part into an assembly, Downloading the model from 3D Content Central if you want to share it and make it public for everybody on 3D Content Central. Um, this is similar to the property managers we see when we're inserting toolbox hardware into an assembly. You can see on the left-hand side there, that's my pipe example and all of its uh, different menu selections. On the right-hand side there is the dialog we get or the property manager we get when we're inserting a uh, toolbox component. So a uh, very similar setup there. So how this works, we have two options when we create our configuration publisher. One is a single line design table. And what this does, we include all the parameters that we might want to change, only includes one configuration line. We use our dollar sign part number um, to control the name of the new configuration here in this case. And we can concatenate uh, the name based upon tax and all ourselves, just like we did in that example that I showed you there. Now, with a single line design table, the number of parameters that we can create or number of configurations that we can create is pretty much limitless. As long as we have um, the value set here, we can go ahead and build this out as far as we want to. Um, we create our model, we create our single line table, we right click in the config manager, and we select the option for configuration publisher. So let's jump over here into SOLIDWORKS and show you this real quick. Um, let's see here, this has already got my design table. I believe this is the right example that we want to open up here. No, it's already got the config publisher already done. Um, and that's not the one I was looking for either. All right, let's go ahead and uh, try one other one here before we move on. All right, that's right, I got a big design table there. All right, 
we'll go ahead and want to have the one, I'm going to use the one here today that already has my um, property manager already set in it. Um, but it's just a right click and there's a configuration manager option there. The property manager in this case here was already created. I'm just going to go ahead and edit feature on that one real quick. Oh, and you know what? I was grabbing the complete wrong folder there. I do apologize. Let me close this guy out here real quick. And let's pop this one closed here. Apologize for that. All right. There we go. This is the guy that we were looking for here. So this has got a uh, design table inside of it already. It's just a single line design table. There's one configuration here. Um, we'll go ahead and add the property manager feature that's already out there. And you can see this lists out all my attributes. So we bring in from the list on the uh, left-hand side here, we drag in our items, and we start to build the property manager that we are going to generate with inside, or inside of SolidWorks here. So um, what we get? We have our nominal diameter, we have our outer diameter, it has a parent that is linked back to our nominal diameter size, and all of these things start to tie together for us. Um, we can control our wall thickness, our weight per foot, our schedule, all the items that were in that big uh, chart that we showed at the beginning there. We have our different materials that we can select, whether it has a parent or it doesn't have a parent. Now, the one great thing that I like with this, if we do want to limit some of the possibilities of what people can create, when we create our length uh, feature here, um, the data that we do is a range requirement. So we have our minimum and our maximum and our increment value. So this keeps people from being able to create things that are outside the scope of what we can manufacture um, or maybe what's available to us. So once that is all built, you get the items that we see here. And if we take a look at this inside of SolidWorks here, here's all those different items that we saw, our size, our schedule, our weight per, or our wall thickness, our weight per foot, materials. And we just type in these values because it's a list here. We can type in, we could add an additional material if we want to. Our length value is all there. and. SolidWorks does give us a preview of this. We will pop up in SolidWorks here. And let's make sure we get this guy here. So we can tell it what configuration that we want to try out here. Now we have just a couple of different sizes for this example here. Our schedule, our material. And we get a nice idea of what's going to happen as we try and bring these in. Now like I said, this can come in and we could try different values here. If I tell it six inches, an update model. It does. It generates that. It updates the model for us. We get our preview of it. If I come in here and I tell it that I want to create 3.0625, an update model, we get a warning box here that says your input's out of range. So SolidWorks is very good about that. It even tells us by increments of an eighth inch in there, so we can't get away with anything. All right. Tell it update model, three inches, and it's taken care of. So, Nice, easy way to be able to do that without having to create that big design table out there um, and have the file size crank um, too far um, up for us for items that we may or may not use. So we'll go ahead and close out of that one there. All right. So the other way that we can create this, a multiple line design table. And this we do when the full design table exists. It includes all of the configurations that we want to create. So where the single line was pretty much an unlimited number of configurations, this gives us a limited number of configurations. Um, what we want to do for this, we create the model and the full design table ahead of time. We right click on our configuration manager and we go to the config publisher. We see our list of items there, and we drag the items that we want to control. Now, with the other one, where we have the ability to put in lists and parents and link things together, we don't have that same ability with this. Um, we have our attributes, 
they're already predetermined for us because they've been built inside of that design table already, and SOLIDWORKS recognizes that for us. What we end up with here is a very basic dialog box that gives us our length, our width, our depth, and whether or not we see our holes. So if we take a look at that example, we're going to go into our config publisher uh, multi, and there's one that so I'll open up here. So if we take a look at this here, we look at our different lists of configurations here. Here is all of those configurations controlled inside of our design table already. The names all populate. The tables all been generated. If we look at the property manager here for this guy, we'll just do an edit feature on this. We can see for our edit, we have our length, our width, our depth. Now, there are a couple of other properties here if we did want to control them. Um, there's a left hole diameter and a right hole diameter. Um, we can bring that in and we can control those values if we wanted to. Um, if we don't want to, we can always get rid of that new item, delete that out of there. Um, also, the state of the hole is in there as well. If we do our SOLIDWORKS preview on this one, and you'll see, now we're limited as to what we can do. What I like about this is as we're creating it, it's listing out the configuration name there. So as we change things, the config name is updating here for us. Um, how big, how depth, hole or no hole. You tell it to update model, and it builds that one for you. So you got two nice ways of being able to do this. Um, it's really up to you and what's going to make sense for your company and your environment. Uh, do you want to limit people on the amount of configurations that they create, or do you want to leave it wide open and, uh, and let the floodgates uh, flow at that point? So. We'll go ahead and close these out. Make sure we don't see those right Close out of Excel here real quick. That's good. All right. So that's our config publisher. If I say a nice way to be able to work on those different items. Um, moving forward here, looking at design tables and assemblies. So how is it similar to part models? Our custom properties work the same way. Dimensions all work the same way. We now start to control mate dimensions, though, instead of individual feature dimensions. Uh, we may have some reference geometry dimensions that we put in there. Um, suppressed and unsuppressed work the same way. In a part, we suppress features. In an assembly, we suppress components and assembly features, so any type of assembly items that you may have created. The one thing that's different here is an assembly. We resolve components rather than unsuppress. Why they haven't put those same two words in there, um, uh, it's beyond me at that point. But we'll go with resolve versus unsuppress. Um, these are all the parameters, once again, that are similar between a part design table and an assembly design table. And if you remember from the earlier slide, this list is by far a lot longer than the ones that can only be done for a part or an assembly. So how is an assembly design table different from a, from a part? And it's levels. What we have to consider is levels inside of an assembly. Um, we don't suppress a part feature or change a part dimension from the assembly level. If we do that, that could have a negative impact on us. So what we want to make sure that we do is at the part level, we create a new part configuration in the new part configuration, that's where we suppress the part features or change the part dimensions. And then at the assembly level, we create a new assembly configuration. In that new assembly configuration, we change which part configuration is being referenced. So that's where we get into our levels. So you can see here, we're choosing which configuration of the file we choose to, to show not actually changing the physical dimensions of the part file that are out there. Like I said, this can have a negative impact on other assemblies that are out there. It can have a negative impact on your drawing files that are created. There's a lot of things that can go wrong there for us. Mm -hmm. And this is, our, this is our two examples here. 
the assembly. You can see here on the left-hand side, um, rod with hole. The configuration listed is six-inch no hole. If we look at the other side, um, it's the three-inch post version, and the part file is the same. It's just referencing a different configuration of that. So um, in the new uh, assembly config, we change which parts being referenced, like I said. Um, you get dollar sign configuration at component um, name, and then in brackets there is instance. And that's the next thing that we want to consider here. We look at levels, we look at instances. We need to consider those instances. We might want to suppress one instance of a component that has multiple instances in the assembly, like this. So we have all of our different setups here. Um, different configurations are referencing different configurations of our part, or assembly configurations are referencing different part uh, configurations there. We include the instance number or numbers in our parameter row. So when we look at the example in the upper right there, you can see instance one and instance two in brackets there. And we have to be careful of that. So we show that example there. Um, and by putting just a single number in there, it's going to reference just that single configuration. Now, because this is Windows, this is Excel, we have the ability to put different syntax in there. If I put one comma three, it's going to be referencing instance one and instance three. Instance two and whatever else is out there is going to be left out for us. Um, if we do one dash three, everything within a range, and of course there's the good old wild card or asterisk, we put that guy out there, and it's any configuration um, at that component name. So we'll make sure you're aware of that as you go through and, and work on these. How is it also different from parts? These are the parameters that are unique to assemblies. Uh, display state, whether a component is fixed. This is our first component typically that gets inserted. Uh, the state of a component, we have S for suppress, R for resolved. Uh, we have to be aware of that versus unsuppressed. Uh, we talked about the, the name and uh, some items for bill material are out there also. All right, I know we're starting to run a little bit close on time here, so um, we'll go ahead and jump into design tables and drawings. Um, a model's design table can be shown on a drawing sheet. Um, you select a view, insert tables, design table. That's going to be our options from our drawing side. Um, we can right-click a view. There's tables, and design table is going to be an option there. And what we see on the drawing should match what we see when we're editing the design table in its internal window. Um, this is, note, this is edit table, not edit table in separate window. So if I jump in here and we'll grab one of our files from before. So here's our rod with our hole. Um, it has uh, just some basic set up in here, if I right click on this view, say tables, design table, SolidWorks is going to go ahead and bring that in for us. But what we get may not be what we want to see. It, like I said, it takes whatever was in that edit table window and it displays it there for us. It can be kind of a hot mess for us. Um, we can hide rows. We don't want to see on the drawing. We can resize the sub-window to show only a portion. So you can see what we're getting to here. And that will update to that inside of our inside of our drawing. So if we take a look at this, quick way, by the way, to access a design table, double-click on it, opens up that part model for us, asks us if we want to um, grab any additional parameters. We can show those again by checking that box. We say OK. Here's our big old mess of, of items here. Um, I can grab this window, resize it, get it to be exactly where I want. I think we need to go up one more, down one there, and we'll go in a couple of, oops, 
Got a little bit too uh, happy click in there, clicked outside of it. We'll just do a quick edit table again. Say okay to that. And once again, we'll resize this to be um, what we want. Can scroll that over, get this, you know, once again, exactly where we want it to be. Uh, we can bring this up a little bit more now. And I get exactly what I want to display inside of my drawing file. We can go ahead and say OK to this. Now, obviously, this m might not be an ideal scenario for you here. Uh, just a quick rebuild of our drawing. It's going to update that design table there for me. And there we go. Now, whatever was displayed in our drawing is dis or displayed in our part is displayed in our drawing there for us. We get all of our setup there the exact way that we want it. Obviously, working inside of our SOLIDWORKS file, this may not be the ideal way of doing this. So what we get for our final points here, uh, a couple items. There's a Microsoft OLE size limitation. It might cut off some of the design table on the drawing. Adding the table, decrease font size, resize the sub window, um, can sometimes address this problem. If we double click a design table on a drawing sheet, SOLIDWORKS will open the model and execute the uh, table command. We saw that already. Um, we can create custom views inside of Excel uh, to show different versions of the design table. That's typically what I would do so that you have the ability to have one for editing and one for your design table um, and the drawing side of things. So. That kind of wraps things up for us. Like I said, that was our agenda. It's a lot of information to pack inside of uh, just an hour here. Um, but these are all the different things that we cover here. This was our list of presentations that we did while we were out at SOLIDWORKS, by the way. Um, if you want a copy of the presentation, there is a website listed here. It's just our CATI website. Um, slash SWW18. If you change that to 2017, 2016, 2015, all the way on back, you'll get our previous year's uh, presentations that you have the ability to download. Um, they are without audio, though. It is just a, uh, a PDF of the PowerPoint, but it does a nice job of being able to get you guys the information that you're looking for. Like I said before, a uh, the ability to download this recording will come a little bit later on. You'll receive an email once that does become available. I thank everybody for taking the time to come out here today and watch this. Um, if there are questions, uh, I would invite people to ask them now. I think I've seen chat popping up here uh, quite a few times there. Chris, was there um, anything that you want me to address uh, right away here? Uh, I don't believe so, Josh. There's been a lot of questions just kind of peppering in throughout the uh, the presentation, and we've had some very gracious users from the community helping out with those questions as well. So awesome, uh, awesome. Well, very good. I appreciate everybody with their knowledge and stuff as well uh, filling in any voids. Um, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to uh, to drop them in now. We will take a few minutes to answer those. And uh, once again, we appreciate everybody coming out today and uh, spending your lunch hour or uh, pre-lunch hour with us. A question just came in about suppressing mates and design tables. Yeah, that's easily done at yeah. the assembly level. Exactly. That is done at the assembly level. You can, um, just like you can highlight a feature or anything else, you can highlight that, uh, that mate and have it uh, uh, suppressed or unsuppressed. You can even control your distance mates and angle mates as well, anything that has numeric value, um, instance numbers, all of that can be controlled. Here's one that, that came up here that kind of got lost in all the other questions. Um, any way to exit the design table without saving those changes? Good question, and I believe the is from is if you're doing the edit table inside of the current window, I would say definitely, uh, definitely no. 
Um, you can't do that because it's gonna it's gonna take it. Um, I think hitting escape, I haven't tried it lately, but I think escape still just exits you out of it, but it keeps all the changes that you made. Um, this is where editing in a separate window and uh, saving copies as you go um, is a highly recommended practice. Because you could then delete the one that you don't want and, uh, and reinsert the one that you do have a copy of. Pretty, uh, pretty open-ended here, but variables that cannot be opened with the, or excuse me, controlled with the design table. Uh, I would say uh, refer back to that help link. Or what yeah, Josh I'd say take a look there. at the help link. Um, that'll tell you. Um, I, I think you, it's more what it can control than what it can't control. I, I would say that the list is higher in what it can't control versus what it can't control. Um, any tips for locking cells? Um, just use the Excel functionality that's out there for locking cells or password protecting items. Um, that's going to keep the uh, users who you don't want making changes out of that uh, out of that list there. Yeah, somebody else replied, "Protect your sheets." Exactly. So. All right. I think those were the main questions that we had there. I don't see anything else popping in right now. So um, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, end the presentation. Once again, I appreciate everybody coming out today and taking the time. Um, if there is anything else, feel free to reach out to us on the support line or, um, you know, or drop uh, your reseller, if, you, if we aren't your reseller, uh, a note. Their tech support group, I'm sure, will be happy to help you out as well. And uh, we can help you guys make some awesome designs that way.